What's going on, you guys? Coast here talking UCLA football. Uh, new season obviously coming up upon us. UCLA's gotten through some injuries and a few things in the spring and some drama, but it'll be interesting to see what happens this season ahead. First of all, let's just relook really look at last year. It was a successful year. Got to the nice nine-win total, a win over USC, a win in the South Division, and barely losing the Pac-12 title game. They just barely lost that. It, it was a hell of a game. Being there and being there to support them, I had a great time, but <laughs> unfortunately it was close but no cigar. That's just how it ends. Uh, but hey, everything in the academic year ended well when the baseball team won the College World Series. Uh, first, that was my first championship really as a Bruin to yeah, celebrate. Not, not saying that the water polo ones and the tennis uh, championships don't mean anything, but out of the big three sports, the baseball team won the first big title since 1995 not in basketball. So this little back, though, so looking back, it, it was a good year because it showed we're on the rise in football. So, going on to this year, what happens? Well, Brent Hundley, he's got to learn how to hold on to the ball and when to get rid of the ball. That's been the biggest issue with him. An exciting player to watch. He's efficient. They've used him right, but he's got to learn how to get rid of the ball when needed, not try to make the play every time and force an interception or try to run with the ball and make a play. That, that's been my problem, the only problem I've had with Hundley. Otherwise, we've been good. Don't call too many screen plays, uh, but... Let's go on here. The offensive line, most of them, they may not be starters necessarily from last year, but a lot of the offensive line is experienced. A lot of those guys got come in, in time and rotation. A lot of young players, with the exception of Xavier Suofilo, who's obviously well experienced and well traveled. Uh, no, no pun intended. So, you know, offensive line. Best thing about that position is the depth. We actually have offensive line depth for once, thanks to our past recruiting class. We really addressed that position. The uh, tight end will be the interesting hole, and right now I think Darius Bell, former quarterback on the team, is listed uh, as the uh, one of the tight ends. I know Fourier left a big hole for this team, but hopefully we find a tight end that emerges for the season to come. Could be Marte, for all we know. I'm not so sure, but I don't know what you thought there. Uh, Wide receiver, we got young, talented guys from Jordan Payton, Devin Fuller, Devin Lucian. Uh, it's still interesting when we took Fuller's red shirt off, but I guess it was worth it because later in the year he did some things, and uh, I guess using his athleticism as a receiver was worth it there. Uh, Shaq Evans being the only veteran coming back out of the wide receiving core. Uh, should be loaded with weapons, a lot of good young talent. Just hope everybody's healthy. Then becomes the big question at running back. And that's where it gets interesting because Jonathan Franklin left a big hole there. Uh, I know I heard he's not doing well with the Packers, but that's for another story. Uh, there's a lot of guys from Jordan James to Malcolm Jones who comes back after leaving. He's I think I believe he's a walk-on this year. But I feel Malcolm Jones was very capable of being a starting running back. That's from what I've seen of the team. But Jordan James has the most experience. And then there's the guy named Paul Perkins who was considered the dark horse that Hundley worked with in high school. That would be interesting if he somehow wins the job. Uh, Damien Thigpen is a dynamic player, very fun to watch when he's on, and he's fast. So I like Thigpen as a speed guy, but the every down guy obviously made the best guy win. I hope hope whoever becomes the running back doesn't fumble the ball as much. Uh, we were spoiled with Franklin last season for sure. So offensively, this should be an exciting team to watch. A lot of people coming back. That should not be the biggest worry. Uh, the only thing that should be worried about is the play calling from Walter Mazzoni. Just hope it doesn't get too cute. Do not call too many screens, and hopefully they run the ball effectively. That, that's what I'm, you'd hope for. Uh, the only other minor question is the backup quarterback position. I believe T.J. Millweird has transferred, so the backup behind Hundley is Jerry Neuheisel. The, and no, he's not a walk-on. He was a scholarship quarterback and part of Rick Neuheisel's last class. Other than that, you got walk-ons and Asante Worldguard, who will be our future, you don't redshirt him. Or, sorry, you don't burn his redshirt this year and, and play him. So, uh, the quarterback position after Hunley, if something happens to him, Lord willing, is screwed if, if Hunley's hurt. Going on defensively, this is where the big question marks come. We got a lot of young recruits, highly touted recruits, but we don't know how good these guys are or not. Defensive line, highly touted guys from Awagmadeo Nigizua. You got Keenan Graham, who probably will be starting at the end. Uh, 
Then you've got F Espinezia. Uh, looks pretty good. Uh, the nose tackle should be the nose tackle there. There's still a lot of hype, though, and this comes from Ellis McCarthy, who is highly touted. Uh, of course, Cassius Marsh will be the opposite side defensive end. Who will be good to replace Dayton Jones? You would expect Graham uh, to step in there and come in, but the big, the big question mark and the big X factor could be Ed Van Eddie Vanderdose. The NCAA ruled him el eligible, and I know Notre Dame fans aren't happy over this, but Vanderdose uh, couldn't make up a decision. I understand Notre Dame's fans' frustration, and I understand that. I don't blame them. But I do think it's hypocritical when a guy like Brian Kelly can leave a job from Cincinnati to, to Notre Dame and leave Central Michigan to Cincinnati the way he has. So, if he's, you know, it's a double-edged sword. You're going to pick on a recruit. How about he picks on his head coaching job when he's under contract, too? So, so I got to say, Vander Doze could be a very interesting player if he makes an instant impact, which I would hope, but you never know. I best defensive lineman win. Linebacker should be stacked. Jordan Zumwalt finally lived up to hype last season. Uh, of course, Anthony Barr on the outside. That will be the man to be watching. I hope he's healthy. I heard there were recent injury reports, and you could argue he's one of the best pass rushers in the league at the linebacker position. Uh, I know there's other pass rushers out there, and, but he should be right up there. Uh, and then the other guy, well, the other guy that's under the radar is Eric Hendricks, and thankfully he's healthy. I like him. Front seven should be the biggest strength of this UCLA defense. Now the part that's the biggest weakness is the secondary, or the biggest question mark of all. Who becomes the secondary guys? Well, it's going to be a bunch of freshmen, sophomores, and retro freshmen. All highly touted recruits. You would hope they would reload. And as crazy as this sounds, the secondary could be better than last year because guys like Andrew Abbott, guys like the... Uh, uh, Sheldon Price, guys like Aaron Hester, unwatchable for so many years. Uh, the secondary could be better than uh, given credit for I, than last year. I would not be surprised, even though these guys are freshmen, guys like Priest Willis or Dehan Goodman coming in, uh, Randall Goforth. Some of these guys are new Hustle recruits, but uh, Jim Brett Jr. has put a lot of his team on these players, and a lot of these, these freshmen could be coming in to step in at the secondary. I can only hope they live up to the hype and they don't get burned, because I know they're raw. Uh, I just hope they can make instant impact, because the, the secondary will be the one question mark coming into this year, and we don't know how good or not these guys are. Uh, special teams, just hope Manfro fair catches the ball if needed and doesn't make any muffs. I've been tired of seeing muffs. Uh, Cammy Fairbairn, uh, pretty good, uh, pretty okay kicker for the standards I had for him. I don't think he can kick the long 47-yarder. But he proved to be adequate from under 40, so that, that's a good range. It just teaches our offense. we got to get to the end zone a little bit more. Punting, farewell Jeff Locke. Enter a new guy. Good luck to us to the punter. I guess punting is winning, right? I mean, that was our old theory. So looking going from the rest of the conference and just breaking it down. It's weird. We have two bye weeks uh, in the beginning of the season, and then we play nine straight games. That brutal stretch where we're playing Stanford and Oregon back-to-back. You could argue we have one of the toughest schedules in the nation. And if we somehow win all of those, not saying we will, but if we did, we would be in the national title game, guaranteed, if, if that happened, because our schedule's brutal. we got to go to Oregon. we draw Washington out of the north. Uh, now, those guys are supposed to be some up-and-coming. Well, Washington is supposed to be up-and-coming. Uh, Oregon is always a top team, and playing there is not fun. Stanford, of course, having our number. Uh, it's frustrating. I'm not scared of playing at Stanford. It's the idea of just playing them, period. They're, they're a tough team, and they're, they're expected to do very well. Now we look out down to the south, uh, briefly breaking down the southern teams. Colorado, new coach, new era, too much holes. They're going to be a mess. Utah, let's see how good their quarterback is, the guy they broke in last year. I still think there's some holes uh, here, here and there. At best, they'll be a 7- or 8-win team. I don't know, Utah. Big question mark. They, they have to fix a few things. Uh, we'll see how much pressure is on Kyle Whittingham, but we'll see there. Arizona. They got to break in their quarterback. They got a USC transfer at quarterback. That'll be interesting. Exciting offense to watch. When we play there, it won't be easy because that's a team that's had our number with the exception of last uh, fall. Arizona has mostly spanked us for the most part. and You never know. They don't have a defense, but offensively they're 
exciting to watch. USC, the hated Trojans, they don't, you don't know who's going to be the quarterback necessarily. They still have all that talent in the world, and maybe having a new coach defensively instead of Monty Kiffin will help them out. They still got an offense uh, in terms of wide receivers and Marquise Lee, obviously. So they still got all the highly touted recruits. Lane Kiffin as a coach, we all know what he can do. <laughs> Good or bad, we don't know. But USC still has the talent. Arizona State, lastly, I have them as one of the best teams in the South. Taylor Kelly, very underrated quarterback compared to some other people. This guy, this guy's for real. He's going to be dangerous. And then, of course, their offense was pretty explosive if you didn't watch Arizona State. Uh, they, rebuilt, they had a very so-so start, but when they were winning in the second half, they tore, tore it apart. You've got to watch out. That's the biggest threat in the South, in my opinion. Uh, of course, Will Sutton being on the team, big factor. He came back for school, so... Arizona State, big competition. USC, obviously big competition. But some other teams could benefit from the idea that we're playing tough teams in the North. And we gotta, we got to learn to beat some of those teams. Uh, it's not going to be easy to face UW or Oregon, even, and of course, Stanford. Uh, Cal this year, new coach, new system. they got to do some adjusting. If we lose to Cal at home, this is going to be a long year. I can tell you that much. The other uh, non-conference games, two of them should be winnable. Very uh, Nevada will not be easy to start the season, but it still should be a win. Nebraska will be tough, but it still will be interesting because it's early in the year. Yeah, they played last year. They learned from each other. The defenses should be somewhat improved. Who knows? We could win that game. I know it's in Lincoln, but it's not impossible. That's all I can say for that. UCLA, I think, if they get to the 9 repeat the nine win mark, I would consider that success. Even the eight win mark, I would be okay with. Uh, if they somehow go lower, and it's, who knows if an injury happens or not, I won't be excited, but eight to nine wins would be my goal this year. I think there's a, too many holes in the secondary they got to fix, but people have them contending for the South. I'm not one of them. I mean, it's not me being negative. I just think there's a few things on this defense that needs help. So it's also otherwise... Good luck, Coach Jim Moore, Jr. I hope you do well, and let me know what you guys think about this Bruins team ahead. See you guys later, and go Bruins.